ребята. Я поняла. Joel Montalbano, ISS Deputy Program Manager. Joel, uh, it's almost like deja vu all over again, as uh, Yogi Berra once said, but here we go again with Nick uh, Haig and Alexei Ovchinin, hopefully this time all the way to the space station. Your thoughts on uh, the eve of launch here? Uh, well, you know, the Russians, they make an incredible rocket, an incredible spacecraft. We look forward to seeing them fly again. You know, it's originally designed to carry people to and from space, but it's designed with a feature that enhances the safety of the crew. And as we saw in October, the crew safely returned and they're launching again. It's an incredible tribute to the Russian engineers and it's an honor to be part of that process. So five months have passed since the launch aboard. Uh, Haig and Ovchinin get a redo, basically, a do-over, if you will. Uh, what kind of training, is it refresher training, is it proficiency, do they start over from scratch, are they ready to go? 
uh, it's pretty much refresher training. And so, you know, these crews, they were ready to go in October. They were ready to go the day they were brought home in October. And so refresher training, we give them, you know, some updates on the science program, you know, the science and utilization program we do on orbit. 21 years, this we're starting our 21st year of International Space Station. We've affected over 100 countries across the globe doing either research on board or outreach. And so this crew enhances that program, does some refresher training, and they're ready to go. Less than a week ago, the commercial crew program ushered in its inaugural flight with the SpaceX uh, Crew Dragon mission that was wildly successful. Now, human space flight back in the picture for this week. Uh, the International Space Station just seems to churn it out week after week after week. This is an incredible year for us. We've already had two U.S. cargo vehicles on board the International Space Station that have come and gone. You mentioned this, the highly successful SpaceX mission. That mission landed Friday. We returned to Kennedy Space Center with the capsule on Saturday. We'll study that vehicle for the next couple of weeks, and eventually we'll put crew members on board launching from Kennedy Space Center. Today, we're in the eve of the, the launch, you know, the week of the launch of the Soyuz spacecraft. We'll get up to six people, back to six people on orbit, which is important for us in order to do our research and science program. We have two spacewalks scheduled later to uh, do some improvements to our onboard power system. Another spacewalk in October, in, uh, in April, a uh, progress cargo launch in April, two U.S. cargo launches in April. We just keep going and going and going. It's incredible pace, but something we've done for years and something we'll continue to do for years to come. And for uh, Haig, Ovchinin, Christina Cook, and McLean and their Russian crewmates, and then international partner involvement later in the summer with Luca Parmitano joining the crew, uh, it, uh, it is a true testimony, is it not, to the international partnership? Absolutely. The, the thing that makes this partnership the strongest is our international ties. The fact that this is not human space flight for any single agency, it's human space flight for mankind across the globe. And we recognize that and we experience that on a daily basis. Just a pleasure to be here. Bill Gerstenmeyer, Associate Administrator for Human Exploration. Uh, Bill, uh, five months have passed since uh, a fairly harrowing day here with the launch aboard for Nick Hague and Alexei Ovchinin. They get another shot, very rare, but uh, they intend to take full advantage of it. How critical is this launch, uh, not just to get them all the way to the space station this time, but uh, to, uh, with Christina Cook, augment the crew and get on with business? Yeah, again, I think it's a, a real tribute to, to the Russians that we can get turned around and this crew gets a chance to fly again. Uh, you know, we don't like to see aborts. We don't like to see the rocket not work correctly. But in the end, everything worked out exactly the right way. The crew got back safely. They were uninjured. They're able to turn around, get back into flow. So it's a unique experience. They get a chance to, to go get on the rocket again. They're very experienced. They're ready to move forward. They're ready to go get on orbit. You know, again, it's important right now. We get the crew back up to six here for a little while on board station. We get three more crew members up on station. There's a lot of research going on, a very busy time coming up with lots of flights. Uh, there's a couple cargo flights coming up. There's a bunch of EVAs planned that we've been kind of holding off on for a while, and it's time to get back to work and, and get stationed back up again and get flying again and, and continue this wonderful research we're doing on board space station and we're doing on orbit. You know, we seem to talk about this topic almost every time we're in Baikonur, but the space station program, it it's at warp speed. Less than a week ago, SpaceX Crew Dragon returns after a wildly successful mission to inaugurate commercial crew program, and here we are in Baikonur for a human launch. Uh, your thoughts about the pace, how the pace can be sustained, and where we head from here as we almost complete 22 decades of uh, space station. Yeah, again, I think it's it's really about being kind of measured in the pace, right? So it's not that, you know, we're sprinting or these things are happening fast. You, you do the planning, you execute, you're prepared if things are ready to go fly. If they're not, you have three or four backup plans behind you and, and you're ready to go continue to keep moving forward. So I think it's a tribute to the planning, um, you know, the coordination needed internationally and even with our U.S. providers is it, pretty phenomenal. But the program makes it all look seamless and then it comes to together in these flights and I think the outside world sees these and they sense uh, maybe a, 
maybe the picking up of the pace, a little bit faster activity, but I think from a program standpoint, this is kind of our stride. We're figuring out a way to make all this work, to, to make what is really complicated look easy. And, and that's what this team does, what this international team does, is they pull together, they work hard together, they work as a combined team to do these amazing things. They don't just happen in one day. They don't just happen when the rocket rolls out. It happens many years ago when pieces of this rocket are coming together. They're they're doing all the activities moving forward. So I think we see the end work. We see the, the culmination of all the work and the effort. But I think you really need to look a little bit behind the scenes and look how well integrated this team is working together. And in the background, but not so much in the background at times, another step on the road to Moon Mars. I mean, this is the prototype for the way business will be conducted. Yeah, again, I think you get a chance to see what we're doing on board station. <clears throat> There's some new life support systems on board station, and those are the second generation of life support systems that will be used for Mars-class missions. And, and we're starting to turn around uh, systems where we can recycle, you know, even more of the water than we do today. And, and we're figuring out ways to save propellant on board station, so we do zero propellant maneuvers. We were able to accommodate the, the, you know, the Dragon vehicle coming up and docking without any real impact impact to station operations. And we've had the batteries on orbit for a while that came up on HTV, but they've not been installed. They've been safely stored on the outside of station. Now we're going to get to go do the spacewalks to finally install those batteries. So there's a there's a sense of patience you have to have in this program that maybe everything doesn't happen instantaneously or doesn't happen at exactly the moment that you thought it would. But if you've got that long vision, it's amazing what you can occur. So I think what we're seeing here today is the beginnings of us moving from the moon to Mars Mars and moving human presence sustainably into the solar system. That first step is really going to start here with this launch uh, from Baikonur in a couple days. Yesterday, there's a video on Facebook yesterday about 